We'll be preparing acetic anhydride the classic way using acetyl, chloride and sodium acetate. The single most important thing in this reaction is that, your sodium acetate must be anhydrous and completely dry. We've baked ours in an oven at 200 degrees C, for 4 hours in total, occasionally stirring the powder. The textbook process is to actually melt the solid prior to performing the reaction, however we wanted to see if we could get a reasonable yield through just oven drying. Weigh out 80 grams of anhydrous sodium acetate and place this into a dry 500 ml flask. We've added a thermometer to track the temperature. Now stopper the flask and place it into an ice bath and get the contents as cool as you can. Measure out 60 grams of chilled acetyl chloride. This is about 55 mils of liquid. As you can see, you'll need ventilation here. Now slowly add a small amount of the chilled acetyl chloride to the sodium acetate in the ice bath. Give the mixture a stir and allow the acetyl chloride to absorb and react. This produces quite a lot of heat so go slowly and don't allow the temperature to rise above about 60 degrees C otherwise you'll risk losing acetyl chloride. It's easy to overshoot we added a little too much and quickly hit 70 degrees. So go slow and allow the mixture to cool between additions. Once the acetyl chloride is completely added, swirl the flask, and you'll notice some more heat generated. The contents of the flask turns into a liquid slurry. Now set up for simple distillation, we're going to distill off all liquid so a thermometer in the still head isn't necessary. We've used a calcium chloride drying tube to protect the distillate. The first sign of liquid boiling is around 110 degrees C. Since our sodium acetate is unlikely to be 100% dry, there will almost certainly be some acetic acid present in our mixture. Pretty soon a strong distillation starts and a solvent front creeps up the adapter tube. It's always very satisfying to watch this. Distillation is pretty rapid to begin with and slowly tails off but keeps going for quite a while. As distillation proceeds the slurry in the flask turns more and more solid. Quite a lot of liquid distills off, so don't stop the heat too early. It took a good hour and a half before the distillation died down to a very low level and the contents of the flask turned a yellow burnt color. Here's our final distillate, it has a slight yellow color, as you can see. This definitely contains acetic anhydride, but also smaller impurities such as acetic acid and maybe some ketones as well. To purify our crude product, we'll fractionally distill it. We're using a 40 cm Vigro Cologne as you can see here. We've chosen to fractionally distill because acetic acid and acetic anhydride have boiling points which are around 30 degrees apart. You could possibly use a simple distillation on a strong heat source such as an oil bath but you'd need to go very slowly and carefully. Soon after heating strongly the liquid in the flask boils. And we get another nice solvent front climbing up the column. We used aluminium foil to insulate the column to make the distillation more efficient. When the vapor reached the top of the column we initially got a temperature of about 100 degrees C and slowly climbing. At this point we got a slow distillation of a small amount of initial product. This had a faint yellow color and an acetic acid aroma and ultimately we discarded this. Once the temperature rose in the still head to above 130 degrees C, we switched the receiving flask and then began to collect the distillate as our main product. 
Use ventilation because we notice that even the tiniest amount of anhydride vapor in the air is quite irritating to the eyes, even if you can't smell it. Note that we perform the initial reaction twice and then combine the products for this distillation, so the volumes you can see here are double. Complete distillation took around two and a half hours in total, and the boiling point was very consistent throughout. At the end the boiling flask contained some tar-like residue. Here's our final product, 130 grams of pure colorless acetic anhydride. Given that we used doubled the first reaction, this corresponds to an average yield on our first reaction of 83% based on acetyl chloride used. The product doesn't smell strongly of acetic acid, in fact, you initially think it has no aroma at all and then suddenly it hits you, a very pungent and irritating aroma. Another common question is how it mixes and reacts with water. Let's add a little bit and find out. You can see at the bottom of the beaker that there is a separate bubble of acetic anhydride with a small bubble of air trapped on top. This is cold water, and the reaction is slow. We can see something happening, but it's a slow process. Stay tuned for some interesting experiments which make use of our acetic anhydride.